I gotta be honest, guys. Was this film really even worth my time? I know what you guys are gonna say. Um, I'm not giving this, this movie a fair chance. But honestly, what's what's about this movie to like? I saw the trailers for Morgan back back when um, um back when the trailers were still coming out, and there was some hope for this film, given that it was produced by Ridley Scott. But even less um, hope was given to me when I realized that the director of this film was his son, Luke Scott. Now I get it. Um, sometimes, um, sometimes great filmmakers' um, sons and or daughters want to follow in their footsteps. Like look at people like Francis Ford Coppola and his daughter Sophia when she when she wanted to make a, a transition to directing, just like him. Or even people like say um, Clint Eastwood when his um, when his son wanted to get into acting. That's not good. However, those transitions don't really get don't really get. Um, um, well, plan well planned out, and sometimes they can feel like nepotism if they're not framed properly. So, a case in point for for Morgan. Now, Morgan, and the, now Morgan is simply based around um, based around an artificial intelligence named Morgan, uh, like a human hybrid who's been raised in who's been raised in like this abandoned mansion for a long time. She's overseen by a group of scientists, and, and Kate Morris' character uh, is a behavior is a behavior analyst who travels to. The mansion to examine her behavior, on the way on the way of what is going on the way that of stuff that's going on. So after, um, so yeah. Now in this film, if you're very reminiscent of a previous film I'd seen two years ago and covered on this channel, the film was, was called Transcendence, produced by Christopher Nolan and directed and directed by his director of cinematography Wally Feister. Unfortunately, that film was not real, was not very good and not really well received, especially by me. Mostly because the film was too tedious, way, way, way too slow, and extremely uneventful and kind of, uh, kind of honestly, but pretty boring. So yeah, going to Morgan, I didn't know what to expect. So was I right all along? Well, folks. And I, I think I know pretty, pretty, if you guys can't tell, yeah, Morgan. Although Morgan does have some interesting ideas like transcendence, the problem is just in the, like that film. The uh, the film the film has some good ideas, but it refuses to develop them into anything substantial. It's substantial. Um, it's, it's nothing of the characters and and the and the entire premise, especially the ending as a whole. So let's start off with um, Luke Scott. With Luke Scott. Now look, I appreciate. Now look, um, you can definitely see. I'm not gonna say he's a bad director. I can definitely say that, because that is one thing that, that sets this movie up in transcendence. Like Wally Feister, was a great cinematographer. He's br he's actually rather brilliant. But being a sim, but being a director is much different from a cinematographer. As you, as not only do you, can you, do you have to direct the scenes, but you also have to uh, keep a balance of other things like direction, um, the actors, the tone, and especially the pacing. But that was some of the things that Wally Feister got wrong in Transcendence, and Luke Scott does do enough to make the, to step up, to, to step things up, and make those a bit better. I can't say that. However, we need to get to. However, that's pretty much where everything ends. Uh, all my all my praise ends because he because now we have to get into the negatives, and there's a lot of them. And and I really hate to say this off the bat. Um, I do like the uh, the cast in this film. Like you have like Kate Mara, um, Paul Giamatti, um, Anya Taylor Joy, Toby Jones, and Boyd Holbrook. And this, the bad news is that, for such as the actors give a good performances, the characters are so uninteresting, and not a single one of them is worth compelling. And sadly, the worst of them is Kate Mara. Now look, I'm not gonna say I hate Kate Mara. I don't want to. I don't want to. Even despite the disaster that was Fantastic Four, she has, especially Zoom back in 2005, she has had a few good movies behind her, like Iron Man 2, and especially um, Ridley Scott's last film, The Martian. However, in this film. That girl's as blank as a canvas. Her character is uninteresting, uh, uninteresting, and wait, and, and pretty unpredictable. Uh, because of the deadpan stare that's in her eyes, she has little to no emotive presence, and she barely breaks any octaves at all with her delivery, which makes them seem more uninteresting. And, uh, and honestly, it's a bad thing when I say when, when I say that Paul. Is it bad to say that Paul Giamatti, when he appears, he practically steals web, uh, whatever time he has? Because honestly. I actually wish there was more of him. That guy's a great actor, and I honestly wish he could actually be more express. The characters could be more expressive or emotive, like he was. But, but yeah, yeah, we can't tell Paul Giamatti is the best in this film. However, um, however, this one, how, however, the direction is pretty good. The writing, however, 
not so good. Because not only is the writing pretty sloppy, but but, but, not, but not only does this, is the film take itself so seriously that that not once I find myself laughing or even chuckling at all, at all. Um, the characters were so uninteresting that, 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 they, that there's probably a sense of levity or anything br or anything broad or anything worth smiling about in this film. Like there's nothing worth getting invested in. The film was just so serious that. It feels like really Scott's trying to recreate his, his success with films like Alien or other, other ultra serious films like that. And it's completely jarring because in really Scott's last film, which he directed, which he directed, um, the Martian was surprisingly funny, uh, funny, and really Scott just ran with it, and the film turned out well. Why can't they even try that for this film? But that, but I'm just nitpicking there. And honestly, and honestly, I will say that Anya Taylor Joy, the girl who played Morgan, she did, um, she was pretty, she was by far the best. One of the best things about this film, like she had some emotive pre, she, she, she actually emoted a bit well. She was a little bit more expressive, and she at least, and she at least tried to inject some life into the character, even if it didn't work all that well. So yeah, guys, if you can't tell, um, uh, Morgan's practically a slump, and given that Luke Luke Scott's a first time director, um, director especially since he's, re but given that he's really Scott's son, I assume there's gonna be many more projects, projects because hey. It's really Scott. He's gonna pull all the connections he can, right? So yeah, the characters are, in, are completely uninteresting. Kate Mara does not impress me at all as the lead character. I need to enjoy Paul Giamatti and do inject some life and the ending. Oh gosh, the ending is way. Uh, you can probably see the ending, co ending coming a half an hour, to, half an hour before it even comes, because I know I did, honestly. Uh, so honestly, yeah. There, although there were some parts about this film I did like, but overall, I can't recommend this, guys. I'm sorry. It's just not. This is by far the second, the third uh, worst week of films I've seen, and hopefully this week, um, next weekend will step things up. But for me, four point five out of ten. I can't recommend this, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. If you guys are looking to play cameras uh, in a film, I can I can actually make something better for you guys. But this, well, well, like I said, Auntie Joe is gonna be in M Night Shyamalan's new film Split. So if you want to wait for that, go ahead. Otherwise, but yeah, skip this film. You'll probably be better off for it. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Um, I'm sorry this is a little late. I'm still trying to fix my camera, but I promise I will. I promise I will have a new review about out for you guys soon. Thanks a lot for watch. Thanks a lot for watching again. Until then, I'm Ross. This is Eminem. You're watching Eminem Weekly. I'll see you guys soon.